Hi, I'm Janice Switlow, and I'm here to remind that none of the treaties that exist between Her Majesty and the Indigenous Nations pertaining to her exercise of partial political sovereignty in what she calls the Dominion of Canada, none of those treaties are removal treaties. But Section 35 is indeed a removal doctrine. So I just want to quote from uh, uh, this book on some history in the United States, for example. The Indian Removal Act of 1830 stands as one of the most abhorrent pieces of legislation ever passed by the United States Congress. By 1832, the removal policy of the government had been carried out almost everywhere. The creek were nearly gone and it was supposed that the related Seminole peoples of Florida would be willing to travel with them to the new land. The Treaty of Payne's Landing was negotiated on this basis. That was a treaty removal, a, a, a treaty of removal. And then further it discusses about how in December uh, of that year that the U.S. Army troops had arrived to enforce the removal treaty. Now, for those concerned with the Wasuetan situation, there is no removal treaty in effect. So RCMP soldiers, for example, should uh, they bring in the military as they did at Gustafson Lake, they have no, they have no foundation to enforce something like that because it does not exist. However, as we know, we've had hereditary chiefs and others citing Section 35. Well, Section 35 is actually a domestic removal doctrine. It sets out how Canada can, quote unquote, lawfully remove people from their land. Uh, because, of course, it's not their land. It's under lighting title owned by the Crown, so says this domestic doctrine, contrary, of course, to all the treaties. And it says, provided you do these things, you know, give some notice, uh, you know, and say, you know, when we need you off, um, we'll do some consultation, maybe give you some money as accommodation, uh, and therefore we can be seen to be following the rule of law that we created in self-interest, contrary, as said, to the actual treaties and what is required, which is why I always refer to Canada uh, as the outlaw nation. So again, I'm emphasizing this Section 35 doctrine, how dangerous it is to proceed on that basis. And, and I ask you this, if it was such a great deal, why do we even have the Wasutan, Wasutan situation happening? What's, how, how much better are the Chakotan? How much have they been dealing with? They're having to, to concede and concede what little bits they, they've been given by the domestic courts, not by creator, right? They've, they've said, no, no, we, we, we know we never had the right to be here. Uh, we know we weren't uh, really people, you know? It's all based on doctrine of discovery. So I really wanna emphasize that. Don't respond and act and say and speak as if you're subject to a removal treaty. You're not. You have treaties in place that preserve your underlying title, that preserve your sovereignty and your right to exercise, not just internal municipal powers, okay, which Canada is saying that's all you have, but the whole bundle with Her Majesty only being granted partial permissions, which actually bind her governments. Thank you for your time.